So let's have a look at the mathematical basis for why Mikkelsen and Molly, why Mikkelsen and Molly expected their light to arrive at the sensors at different times. Now, if you've just joined in this video, you'll need to watch my Mikkelsen and Morley initial video. So here I'm just looking at the mathematical basis behind their calculations. But in order to understand what's going on, we have to understand that, of course, as the light rays travels, uh, travels. To help us understand, we need to know that the light, of course, passes through the half silvered mirror hits this particular mirror, then returns and strikes this half silvered mirror and then meets the sensor down here. But of course, being a half silvered mirror, some of this light goes up and of course then returns down, travels through the half silvered mirror and comes back here. Now we're interested only in these sections here. So this section over here and this section over here because the light here and here, they travel exactly the same paths, but here's where they deviate. And Mikkels and Morley, of course, expected two light rays to arrive at different times because of the presence of ether wind. And in our case, we're gonna apply ether wind going in the direction from left to right. So in order to see why Mikkels and Morley believe they arrived at different times, they assume that light behave they assume that light behaved classically. So therefore the speed at which this light travels in this direction is equal to C plus V, and the speed as it returns is also uh, the combination of C and V, but in this case it's C minus V. Now in order to work out the time, they of course said, well time one is easy, the total distance here, and it's the distance here and here are exactly the same, is equal to D, and the speed, of course, is equal to C plus V. Time two, of course, is the same, except that it's now C minus V, except that it's now C minus V. When you combine these two values here, you end up getting a total time of equaling D over C plus V plus D C minus V, and if you calculate that out, and I let you do the mathematics, it's 2DC over C squared minus V squared. But what about this part of the journey here? Well, in order to understand that, you have to understand that the distance that the light beam travels is not a straight line. Yes, it's going in that direction, but of course the velocity is pushing it in that direction, so we have a combined distance of actually equaling that. Well, the distance, of course, is this here, D, we know that already. This distance that it travels horizontally is equal to VT, and the distance it travels here is equal to CT. Now, if you do the mathematics, you'll see that CT, all squared, must equal D squared plus VT, all squared. See, now we have a relationship between C, T, D, and V, like we did over here, and we can isolate the total time, at least the time it takes to go upwards. And so what we end up getting is we're getting T squared is equal to D squared over C squared minus V squared. That means the time up will equal, of course, D over the square root of C squared minus V squared. That means the total time that is going up and back, and if it goes back, the triangle is going to be similar, but it's gonna go in the other way, you're going to get a value of 2D over the square root of C squared minus V squared. Now, what is clear, of course, is that this total time here is not the same as this total time here. They're different. And that's what Mikkelsen and Morley expected. The light beam would arrive at different times, and so you would have interference fringes. And as they rotated this apparatus around, the differences in interference would differ as well, because the mathematics would slightly be different, and you would get a change in the interference pattern. And of course, what happened was there was no interference, change interference patterns whatsoever, 
which suggested that the light was arriving at the same time, no matter what. And of course, that was the whole point of understanding because of Morley's experiment, the reason that it was a null result, and as a result, could only be explained once Einstein's theory of special relativity came out in 1905. Thanks for watching.